Hey everyone, in this video, we're discussing the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, also called the oxyhemoglobin curve, or OHDC. This curve shows us how our blood carries and releases oxygen molecules. The curve actually shows us the point at which oxygen can release or dissociate from hemoglobin to be used by the cells based on a normal body pH and body temp. It's cool stuff, so let's get started. First, we have here on the x-axis the partial pressure of oxygen. The partial pressure of any gas refers to the pressure of that gas inside a mixture of gases inside a container. This partial pressure reading is given in millimeters of mercury and corresponds to the total pressure that the single gas would be exerting if it were occupying the whole volume that the gases are contained in. The y-axis shows the percentage of oxygen saturated hemoglobin molecules. This curve shows hemoglobin's normal affinity or attraction to oxygen and the ease with which it will release the oxygen molecules that it's carrying to the tissues. Oftentimes, students get confused by the relationship that pulse oximetry plays with this curve. The gold standard for determining oxygen saturation at the arterial level is a test called the AVG or arterial blood gas. That test shows us the SAO2 levels. That said, obtaining an AVG isn't always feasible. When we use a pulse oximeter, we're measuring the patient's SpO2. We use a pulse oximeter to provide us with an indirect and non-invasive way of monitoring a patient's SAO2 levels. The pulse oximeter doesn't come without some limitations in quality and accuracy. For the purposes of this video, we won't be diving into those. We see that once we hit about 60 millimeters of mercury in our partial pressure, the curve plateaus and we don't get as much of an increase in oxyhemoglobin saturation percentage with an increase in our partial pressure. To achieve a higher saturation of oxygen in the blood, when we're seeing readings of roughly 90 to 94% on our SpO2 monitor, we provide supplemental oxygen. This additional oxygen increases the partial pressure of oxygen in the system, therefore raising our oxygen saturation levels. But it also increases the ease with which hemoglobin will offload oxygen to the tissues. 92% on your SpO2 monitor should be considered a warning sign that arterial oxygen levels and pressures are hindering your patient from oxygenating appropriately. That warning sign requires further investigation and intervention. With that, it's important to understand that this curve can shift to the right or left depending on a variety of factors. We'll go over those shifts in our next video. Thanks for watching.